You are listening to KSG podcast. This is a short, crisp, concise, exam-oriented, edited editorial for civil services aspirants. In this podcast, we are going to talk about Nehru's forward policy remains a puzzle. Source for the content is Zuravar Dalat Singh's article for the print. One of the unresolved puzzles from the 1962 India-China war is why the Jawaharlal Nehru government, despite being acutely aware of India's military weakness, adopts the infamous forward policy in December 1961, a policy widely accepted as having placed India in an untenable military situation on the northern border. The short answer is that Prime Minister Nehru believed the international environment favored India in its dispute with China. Now talking about balance of power, growing confidence that the global balance of power was tilting in India's favor had become the general belief in Delhi by the turn of the 1950s. India-US and India-Soviet relations were developing as rapidly as China's ties with the superpowers were deteriorating. After 1956, there had been an important US policy shift towards South Asia and an attempt to engage India by supplying large economic assistance to support its second five-year plan, which aimed to foster and promote industrialization in the country. In December 1959, then-US President Dwight D. Eisenhower encouraged Nehru to take a firm stance vis-à-vis China. Eisenhower assured Nehru that the U.S. would not let Pakistan take advantage of India while it was dealing with its northern frontiers. The Soviets, too, had chosen to reveal their differences with China when they began publicly taking a neutral position on the India-China dispute while privately berating the Chinese for their reckless conduct in Tibet and the People's Liberation Army's skirmishes in 1959. The first clash occurred in August 1959 at Longju in the eastern sector and then another one in October 1959 at Konka Pass in the western sector. After 1959, the Indian government began to perceive the superpower tilt in favour of India on the dispute as a restraint on Chinese behaviour. For example, in September 1959, Then Defence Minister V.K. Krishna Menon felt that the Chinese were moderating their rhetoric on India after the Soviets had advised Beijing to be conciliatory. One could view it as soft external balancing, similar to how India leverages third parties to quietly weigh in on geopolitical issues today. In 1959, India made requests to the Soviet to moderate Chinese behaviour. Soviet support was expressed in the famous TAS statement on 9th of September 1959, which, by taking a neutral position on the dispute with India, broke ranks with the Chinese. It was a dramatic international development in the Cold War, as China's differences with the USSR came out in the open. Now, talking about the pressure China was under, Nehru sensed that Moscow's disapproval of Chinese aggression with India and the Soviet middle attitude of neutrality were a major development and an indirect criticism of the Chinese position. Nehru felt Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev's visit to Beijing would probably raise the question of the India-China border. Indeed, during their contentious October 1959 meeting, Khrushchev admonished Chinese Supremo Mao Zedong and other leaders for escalating the border crisis with India. Mao had felt enough heat to have assured the Soviet leadership, and I quote him here, You will see for yourselves later that the McMahon line with India will be maintained and the border conflict with India will end. The border issue with India will be decided through negotiations, unquote. Almost immediately, Indian officials felt this change in attitude as senior Chinese leaders, including Mao, showed in many ways that they want to be friendly and have discussions with us in the near future. The Chinese wanted to step down as they wanted to do it without loss of face. For the most part, Nehru's balance of power approach was focused on publicly signaling that India had powerful friends. For instance, in November 1959, Nehru remarked in a press conference that the border problem with China would undoubtedly come up during conversations with Eisenhower during his visit to India. When asked about India's future approach to military assistance from the great powers, Nehru noted that in the unfortunate scenario of a war between India and China, such a thing will not remain an isolated, limited affair. The world is dragged into it. The following year, Nehru privately remarked that the U.S.'s fear of China had led it to view India as a balancing factor and therefore more inclined to help Delhi. Nehru felt that China would not risk a major war with India because the Soviet Union was dead opposed to it. More broadly, Nehru hoped that this public show of close India-U.S. and India-Soviet relations would influence China 
and moderate its behavior. He also felt that a U.S.-Soviet detente would serve as a check on China. Now, let's talk about Delhi's false confidence. In retrospect, however, all this was utterly insufficient to help overcome India's asymmetry with China and could have shaped Delhi's false sense of confidence in its subsequent dealings with Beijing. We also know now that... uh, We also now know that the Soviet Union had informed India that they had done as much as they were able to in cautioning the Chinese to exercise restraint. The Russians were clearly not in a position to dictate Beijing when in February 1960, Nehru brought up the China issue and suggested an informal Soviet rule in narrowing India-China differences. Khrushchev's response was instructive. We would not like our relations with either of our two friends to cool off. Khrushchev declined a mediatory role and advised a bilateral approach. It is possible for two wise men to agree among themselves. If the third man appears on the scene, he will only make matters worse. Nehru, however, remained unruffled. In 1959, to the Lok Sabha, Nehru expressed a sense of confidence that the trouble with China had come at a time when India had the prestige and wide friendship in the world today. After 1960, India was receiving generous material support from both the superpowers even as China was getting increasingly isolated, which emboldened the Nehru government to overestimate India's importance in the eyes of Washington and Moscow. The overall effect was that it created a belief that Chinese behavior would be restrained and simultaneously reduced incentives for India to adopt a more pragmatic negotiating position. In the famous April 1960 summit between Prime Minister Nehru and Premier Zhou Enlai, India rebuffed a Chinese offer to settle the boundary on reasonable terms. Another anecdote exemplifies Indian thinking right up to the eve of the war. On 13th of October 1962, a week before the outbreak of hostilities, in an exchange between Indian Foreign Secretary M.J. Desai and U.S. Ambassador John Kenneth Galbraith, Desai remarked that there would be no extensive Chinese reaction because of their fear of the U.S. It is you that really fear. Now, of course, by that time and unknown to Delhi, the Chinese had received assurances from both the U.S. regarding a possible threat around the Taiwan Straits and from the Soviets who were focused on the Cuban Missile Crisis, therefore freeing the PLA to focus on the Indian Front. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. To join KSJ India courses and to crack the ICE exam, visit ksjindia.com. You can also get a PDF of this podcast on ksjindia.com. Thanks for watching.